okay welcome back uh, so we are now in week 5 uh, this is the third module of week 5 so we have been uh, covering in this particular module if you remember in the last two videos we were looking at the collection system we are looking at the transportation system and as i mentioned to you the collection and the transportation uh, part of municipal solid waste management is one of the most expensive part so we'll continue that discussion we'll talk about the transfer station i already showed you some uh, uh, photographs of uh, different uh, transfer stations from pretty much around the world and uh, so I will uh, what I will do is uh, uh, I'll, I'll this in this particular video we'll look at some of those trans uh, we'll look at basically a economics of, uh, of uh, like whether we should I should say that economics of uh, waste transport I would rather put it that way it's essentially to find out uh, where we can whether we can go for a uh, transfer station say if you are in a, a small city or even if you think about Delhi or Bombay or Kolkata or Mumbai uh, sorry in uh, Chennai so even in those uh, cities uh, there you can think of those cities as a combination of several small cities right there so rather than taking the waste collected from a is like one from one region and take it directly to a landfill which is too far or we should take it to a transfer station where we transfer this uh, uh, waste from these uh, smaller trucks to a bigger trailer truck and the bigger trailer truck goes to the landfill. So, we will talk about that, we will uh, I will show you an example, I will not uh, solve the example completely, I will tell you how to solve it and I want you to solve that example later on in the uh, in, in uh, as part of the discussion board and uh, or maybe as a supplemental uh, material we will post the solution to this particular problem but uh, right now i would go over the problem i will explain you how it is to be done and i'll all I'll walk you through the steps, but you need to do the math i want you to work on this problem that's why i'm not doing the entirely 100% uh, so let's uh, get started uh, so in terms of uh, transfer vehicles there are different types of uh, transfer vehicles that has been used uh, trucks and trailers are used uh, typically uh, we have uh, trucks will uh, trailer is the bigger one uh, i showed you some pictures of waste uh, being taken from a smaller trucks to the bigger truck and then also from uh, also the rails are used rail railway uh, is used for transportation if you remember uh, that particular picture from chile where uh, from the transfer station they were taking to the landfill on a railroad so those so those are also uh, used uh, for transporting the garbage. So, in terms of the transfer station, uh, whether we should go for transfer station or not, uh, we can do a we can uh, assess the cost of uh, direct haul versus transfer. When we say direct haul versus transfer, means whether we should take the waste directly from the household collection which is collected in a truck should we take it directly from there all the way to the landfill or should we take it to a transfer station in uh, in the indian scenario what we see is mostly the if you are in a high rise apartment kind of uh, setting you have the waste collected from your individual homes by some person coming in the morning or uh, collecting it in them and then they take it to just outskirts of that uh, apartment complex and they will have certain uh, bins or they will have uh, like a concrete uh, uh, we, in, uh, we call it dhalo or uh, it is basically a concrete concrete bin like it is a big, bigger one and then you put all the garbage in there and uh, that is that the truck comes and collects it from that particular location. So, but most of these trucks are the smaller truck you do not see a huge truck going around the streets uh, especially in the residential area because it will not be able to navigate those uh, streets the streets are narrow and uh, you do not have to bring those big trucks because it is again it take, take, uh, consumes more petrol more gasoline more diesel. So, what you need to do is uh, you have these smaller trucks getting collected then it goes to a uh, uh, to a transfer station or if the landfill is nearby you can take it directly to the landfill so what what is this particular problem is that this particular example is trying to illustrate is how to how to find out how what is uh, how we'll go about finding it out whether it's worth taking this uh, smaller trucks to the landfill or whether it's worth to have a transfer station and then uh, the transfer station can be used as a another uh, you can say collection center or some some sort of processing center as well because as you saw those pictures uh, transfer station is not only used for collection uh, and transfer from one small vehicle to the big vehicle it is also used to recover some of those recyclables which has been which should not have been there but just made ways into the regular uh, uh, to the disposal stream uh, and then you try to pick it up at the transfer station as well so how we do that uh, it's essentially an engineering economics problem you may have uh, 
uh, done that economics uh, engineering economics course if, even if you have not done it if you just apply your common sense it's pretty straightforward and then we'll will uh, show you the example so here uh, in terms what what we do we try to find out since uh, if you remember what i have been talking about i'm saying that it is the distance whether the la whether the distance from the uh, from this individual uh, like a residential area to the landfill or uh, is too far or too low that kind of decides whether we should go for a transfer station or not. So in that case what is the important thing is the distance because it is a transportation cost. So what we are trying to do here is we have to try to find the break even distance. So as you can see here we are trying to do this break even distance uh, will uh, that is find the break even distance that is the distance at which the cost of owning and operating the transfer station is less than the direct haul option. So, we you can op, uh, op, we can make a transfer station and the cost of that uh, cost of owning and operating. So, you, there are two parts here uh, owning and operating. What is owning? Owning means you have to build the transfer station. So, there is a capital cost and when you to operate means there is a regular operation and maintenance cost. So, we have to take it factor both there is a one factor will come from here one factor will come from here you add up both these factors. So, that is what we uh, we will get our uh, total cost showing up for the for uh, if you are doing it for the landfill. Similarly, if you do the direct haul if this is the direct haul option if you do this direct haul option that also has a cost associated with that. So, you have a direct haul cost and this cost is what this cost is what is uh, the trucks that is being used. Uh, we are uh, taking this truck and then uh, we are using this a smaller truck. So, you we have these small small trucks uh, from the different residential areas and say if it is this is our landfill location this all these trucks are going to the landfill location. Here what we are trying to do here we are trying to have for the transfer station you have this a small small trucks. Uh, I am not very good in uh, art I never got good marks in my drawing class. <laughs> so, bear with me with that. So, then you take it to a transfer station and from the transfer station this uh, actually goes to the landfill. So, this is our landfill. So, here in this case uh, whatever is the cost is uh, the cost this cost plus this cost plus this cost plus this cost and there could be some more trucks and we can add them up all and that is the total cost from this uh, transportation. Here the one part is here then we have a transfer station we have to construct transfer station which is not in this case in uh, say if you can say this is the uh, option A and option B. So, in option B which is the direct haul option there is no transfer station. So, transfer station cost is not included there. Here we have a transfer station. So, we have to look at the cost of building the transfer station and also operating the transfer station and then you take this uh, uh, like what things that goes from transfer station to the landfill and here it goes in a bigger truck it is like a big trailer truck rather than uh, a small truck. So, you have this truck which has several you may have seen the wheels with several wheels and it goes uh, over there. So, that is just to illustrate the point. So, this is uh, so we can do the direct haul versus uh, this transfer station operation. So, let us look at uh, one example of that uh, how uh, like how we do the math part of it. So, say if you have a scenario where we are trying to com do the comparison of the transport alternatives. So, if as I was explaining in the previous slide we, this is essentially transport alternatives. So, what are the alternative? We are again we say I said that it will try to find out the break even because it is all depends on the distance is not it. So, we are trying to determine the break even it is the break even time for a stationary container system and a separate transfer and transport system. So, a stationary container means you are collecting the waste and taking it directly uh, to the uh, uh, to the landfill or you have this separate transfer and transport system. So, you are taking this a smaller truck to a transfer station and from the transfer station waste goes to a landfill disposal site. Now, for different uh, data has been given to us in terms of how much it costs in uh, for the transport for uh, a stationary container system using a 18 meter cube compactor those are the vehicles remember I showed you some vehicles which were having a uh, uh, and they, they had a compactor in the truck itself 
I told you that even uh, in Kharagpur town, uh, uh, we saw some of these newer trucks coming up. Many, many, many uh, actually uh, ULBs are buying those trucks, the trucks which has uh, a compactor on the back and uh, it tries to compact the garbage. So when it tries to compact the garbage, what it's trying to do is actually it can, it can store more garbage than a regular truck which doesn't have that compactor. So if you have this uh, and the volume of the truck is 18 meter cube and uh, for this, uh, if you are operating the truck, uh, it costs dollar twenty per hour. Now, if you operate this tractor trailer transport unit, if you have a tractor trailer transport unit uh, and you operate that, of course, it's a bigger, uh, bigger vehicle, but uh, the volume is much uh, big as well. Like a lot, it can take a lot of uh, waste in there. And uh, then, since it's a bigger vehicle, the cost is higher, but not too high. Uh, but in terms of, if you look at the capacity, uh, twenty to twenty-five, which is what twenty-five uh, percent, yeah, twenty-five percent hike in uh, cost but if you look at the volume increase it's much higher you are almost uh, what this is almost nearly uh, around six to seven times uh, six yeah definitely more than six times so it's uh, you have uh, that that much fold increase in the capacity in terms of taking this waste uh, taking the waste uh, in this uh, in those uh, transport units so that's the cost for operating these two different types of trucks the other cost like if you since if you want to operate it as a transfer if you want to build the transfer station uh, so this is what it is talking over here transfer station uh, operating cost including amortization amortization essentially what it means is the capital cost uh, it's basically it's a term for the mortgage mortgage as you know when you buy when you uh, take the loan from the bank that's called mortgage especially for the property any property when you take the loan from the bank that's called a mortgage so so you have uh, uh, like that's in a layman term it is called mortgage some of my economics uh, friend may have a different definition but we don't have to worry about that right now so in terms of uh, uh, like a it, so a transfer station we have to operate the transfer station so there is a cost including that for uh, that part and then there is some uh, to build the transfer station so there is some uh, cost associated with that so for that was dollar uh, 40 per meter cube so it's given per meter cube because in terms of uh, since you're handling uh, different uh, the volume of the garbage and then there is some extra cost uh, extra cost for unloading facilities uh, for the tractor transport unit because now you have to take uh, this uh, tractor transport unit this is a huge truck uh, they have to be unloaded uh, uh, when it goes to the landfill side so there is some extra cost associated with that as well and not too much uh, 5 cents per meter cube and then uh, the dense uh, what are the other data given see if you if you have seen here the, these volumes are given in meter cube and uh, these volumes are also in meter cube and uh, usually we are uh, try to our always uh, we actually look at uh, the price in terms of dollar per ton so if you are trying to find dollar per ton uh, this values are in meter cube volumes uh, are given so what we of course need some density data so we have density data has been provided to us so that we can convert from volume to mass and uh, vice versa so density for waste in the compactor compactor uh, that's the smaller truck uh, this 18 meter cube compactor uh, there you can see that it's 325 kg per meter cube so it's uh, pretty good uh, uh, compaction in transport unit in the big trailer transport unit is 150 so it's much uh, it's actually uh, much less compared to the compactor uh, it's less uh, because in the trailer unit you don't first of all you don't want to compact it too much because if you want to if you compact it too much uh, what is uh, if you uh, if you have looked at uh, the transportation sector a little bit uh, probably you know that uh, there is a limitation of the weight uh, of uh, of any truck when you are driving on the highway uh, if you are going on any highway you see those uh, uh, weighing bridge uh, in hindi there is uh, there was like dharam kata uh, those dharam kanta or the weighing bridge places where you take uh, you will see that uh, they will say the truck has to go that way and the truck needs to be weighed so the truck needs to be weighed from time to time of course from the tax purposes uh, now with uh, gst and all those uh, some of those tax uh, thing may change but there is another reason for weighing those truck is to find out it should not exceed the department of transportation uh, maximum load uh, uh, maximum load limit that is set for any kind of highway so you don't want too heavy of a truck going on that because our bridge our culverts and other things have been designed for a certain weight and if uh, this becomes too much 
the, there will be uh, like the structures will uh, will have damage or there will be collapse there could be some accident so to prevent that there is a uh, there is a limit uh, if you are a civil engineer you know that uh, or even if you are a, any any kind of engineer or scientist, if you, you have, should have fairly understanding that uh, if you are designing something for a particular load, and if you start operating it as a much higher load, of course the structure has a uh, will have all the chances of failure uh, after uh, it uh, passes through. Even usually we put a factor of safety there, but things if you go beyond that, it it will start uh, the, you will start seeing things failing out. So. For that particular purpose, uh, you see the transport uh, tra transporter unit. To, first of all, you don't want to try when you don't want it to be uh, compacted too much because the weight will be too high. And the other thing is that if you compact it too much, it's a huge truck. And then when you take it to the landfill, you have to again uncompact it. That's again you are using a lot of energy to uncompact. So that's that's also is not needed. And so that's the reason why that you see the density is much less in the transporter unit as opposed to a compactor unit. So this is the problem we have. We have been given the cost for different things and uh, we have been uh, given some uh, density information so can we can go from mass to volume and, uh, and other. Now we have to find out what is the break even time. Now how will you go about it? As I said early in the very beginning today that uh, in this particular video that I am not going to uh, give you the entire solution because uh, I want you to work on this problem. We will give you this solution probably after a couple of weeks. Uh, so that you can you get some chance to work on it and uh, I will provide you the answer on the discussion board uh, but, but uh, right now uh, I want you to work on this problem so that's why but I have kind of given you this uh, how to do this problem so let's look at what what things you need to do so you have to come up with essentially this graph uh, which you are seeing uh, over here you have to come up with this graph so now what is this graph let's uh, explain this graph so that uh, uh, so, if you remember, there are the, as you can see here, there are two lines. Uh, we have this, uh, uh, we have this red line, and then we have this green line. Now, this green line is for the transfer station option, and this red line is for the direct haul option. And we are we are uh, plotting since break-even distance was asked, so we are plotting it as a dollar. Uh, per miles, we can also put it at kilometer or anything in that way as well, because uh, that's not a problem. You can put in either way. Now, since the if you remember from the previous uh, slide, uh, the information was provided as uh, uh, like a per hour, and uh, so we have to convert that uh, in terms of uh, so since the distance is as per hour, you can even rather than using the miles you can also use uh, the time. So, rather than using this mile, you can also use it in hours or minutes. Since the data has been provided in uh, per hour. But so, if the data is provided per kilometer or per mile, we can use it as a mile as well. So, there are different ways you can do it. So, here, so this break even distance or we can even have this uh, break even time. Now, what is uh, break even time? What do, what, what do we mean by break even? Break even is the point where the two cost matches and uh, if it goes beyond that, it one, uh, the cost uh, factor changes as you will exp as I will explain to you in this particular video, uh, particular uh, uh, graph right now. So, what we are looking at for this red line, uh, it starts basically at 0, 0. Why it starts at 0, 0? Because uh, the in terms of the transport cost, the cost as the distance increases or as the time of travel increase, where the time of travel is 0, there is no cost associated with that. When there is no uh, time of uh, t is a 0, there is no cost. As your factor, uh, as you are uh, taking your truck uh, by 1 minute, 2 minute, 3 minute, 1 hour, 2 hour, you are seeing uh, a like a linear, you are seeing a linear line going up and up and up based on that. So, and this slope slope of this line kind of tells you at what what is the rate of increase in cost per unit of time or per unit of distance. So that's for the direct haul. It starts at zero. So that's a pretty simple, no problem. And you have this equation. You already have the information in the uh, as part of the description of the problem. So you should be able to come up with this uh, y is equal to m x plus c kind of uh, equation for this particular line. It's, it's a line. So as you know, the line has y is equal to m x plus c. So you can use that, and uh, you can come up uh, with uh, this particular kind of equations for that. 
So now what is the other one? Why the other one doesn't start at zero? Uh, some of you may have already figured it out. So if this is a starting at zero, why the other one is not starting at zero? Uh, the transfer station part. The reason for that is already kind of explained here. What is this? It is the cost of the transfer station. Because if we, as I explained in the previous slide, if you are going for this transfer station option, there is a cost to build the transfer station and there is a cost to operate the transfer station. And that cost has been given over here. So, in this particular, I erase that, but in this particular one, uh, in this uh, equation, if y is say, let us call it y1 is equal to m1 x1 plus c1. And so, if if I am looking at this equation, this particular line, the value of c is what? Value of c1 is 0. Okay, let, uh, let me put the c1 over here, so that you can see it more clearly. Uh, y is equal to m x 1 plus uh, plus c 1. Now, this c 1 is 0 for this particular uh, stuff, but if you look at this particular say if you call it y 2 is equal to m x 2 plus c 2. Now, what is c 2? c 2 is this. Remember from your very big basic uh, uh, like a uh, co coordinate geometry or uh, those uh, uh, things that you did. So, here this is for the transfer station uh, equation, this was for the direct haul equation. Here is we have a C2 value and that is the cost of building and operating the transfer station. So, that is why you start at your uh, the line starts at a value of dollar value equal to C2 and the time of travel is still 0 because from the transfer station it is taken to the uh, landfill. So, you can do the uh, okay, equation for that, wherever these two lines meet that is the break point. Now, what does that mean? So, if you if the distance or if the time of travel is in this particular is in this uh, duration, where our cost of direct haul is actually less than cost of transfer operating and building a transfer station. So, that this cost of uh, this uh, direct haul is less than uh, this transfer station cost. Now, as you go further as you, so this is the like here as you can see that this, this cost line is higher, this cost line is higher than this cost line up to this particular point, but as you cross this particular point actually the direct haul cost uh, keeps on going up. So, direct haul cost is keeping on going up while the transfer station cost is actually uh, is less now. So, as you can see that uh, the, the, uh, the dynamics changes after this, uh, this particular break even point or break even distance, break even time whatever way you put it. So, what I want you to do is uh, I want you to look at uh, uh, this, this is a very important and very uh, interesting, uh, con interesting problem and this is one of the like uh, whenever you look at uh, this transfer station versus direct haul, which is one of the choice that you need to make. Uh, uh, so, it, in that case uh, this, this this actually becomes very, very important uh, for you to do this kind of uh, a calculation. And so, the re reason I am not uh, going over line by line for each calculation as I would do for certain other problems uh, in this. Uh, in, in this particular week, because I want you to solve it, and uh, I have kind of given you enough hint. You are uh, you, so the enough hint and enough directions to do that. So go ahead and solve it. Come up with these two equations. The data has been provided to you, and come up with this break-even uh, time, and then post it on discussion board. Uh, that what the break-even time you got. So once we see that uh, I am giving you like almost two weeks to work on it. So if some of you are busy, it should not take more than an hour to work on this problem. But uh, it just uh, you, you work on it, and then uh, after uh, the end of week six, uh, we will post the answer so that you have the answer to this problem. And then I'll also make a solution and scan the solution and put the solution up there as well. So. So, that is uh, it is a very important concept uh, in terms of economics of transfer station. So, we covered that and the rest of this particular uh, uh, like in uh, this little bit in this video and the subsequent video, uh, we will try to look at some examples. So, we will try to go over some examples. We covered some uh, theory material uh, this week, the previous week and so we will look at how those, how those uh, things are applied. 
uh, in the real world problem. So, if you look at uh, some generation and collection example problem. So, let us look at uh, at least a couple of problem in this video then we will go to the another one at least let us look at one. So, one of the important thing which we talked about earlier as well is finding out the solid waste generation rate because unless we know the generation rate we cannot design our uh, waste management system. So, not the knowledge of the quantity of solid waste generation like how much waste is being generated is very very important. So, we need to find out how much uh, waste is uh, being generated. So, in this method, I uh, oh, sorry I think I went to the next slide. Uh, so, it is uh, the knowledge of the quantities of the solid waste is uh, very important. So, what uh, is it say as I, as I say over here it is kind of fundamental. Uh, it is fundamental to design of uh, solid waste management system because unless we know how much waste is being produced. So, how we do the waste we use some load count analysis, we do the weight volume analysis, we do the material balance. So, these are based on the amount collected, these are uh, what is the amount which is collected, uh, we do not not amount to generated. People also divert some waste in terms of backyard composting, reuse program and other things in there as well. So, there are uh, some of those things are done. So, I think I may have already kind of given part of this uh, uh, stuff earlier. So, in terms of the load count analysis what we do here is uh, we, we actually uh, find out what is the number of individual loads are counted. So, things getting disposed at the disposal uh, things be being brought into the disposal site. So, we look at the number of individual loads which are counted and the waste characteristics uh, are estimated like type of waste estimated values. We have the weight uh, scales are if uh, the scales are available we will weigh the, weigh, the, weigh the data record the data. So, if you take the one example of uh, uh, unit generation rate calculation what is unit generation rate is to find out how much waste is produced per capita per day. It could be per day, per week, per month whatever, but per person. So, unit uh, is basically to find out per person. So, here if you have a residential area, uh, residential area 1500 homes average of 3 people per home. And so, in the observation of the scale or at the transfer station per week what they found is that 11 truck loads came every week, each was 20 meter cube that is the volume of the truck. So, total 40,500 kg per week based on the weight that was uh, uh, what is coming into the transfer station. Then there was 40 private loads. What are these private loads? Uh, people who could not uh, was not at home or they live a uh, little bit in uh, uh, semi urban area. So, their houses uh, are not serviced because uh, there is uh, houses are too far apart there. So, they bring their garbage and drop it off at this transfer station. So, for those private lot uh, loads 300 centimeter cubes. So, people basically bringing that in their uh, smaller truck or maybe in back of the car and 900 kg per week coming there much smaller than that. So, so in terms of the total unit rate is 40,500 uh, coming from the trucks. 900 coming from individuals. So, that is the total waste that is produced uh, in that particular area uh, per week. So, that much kg per week. Now, the population is 1500 houses uh, 3 how 3 persons per house. So, 1500 times 3 is the population. So, this is the amount of waste produced. This is the total population. So, unit rate we can calculate as 9 point. So, if you do the math add this up divided by 4500 and you will get 9.2 kg per capita per week. So, that is per week data and then you can divide it by another uh, factor of 7 because that is what uh, and you get 1.31 kg per capita per day. So, that is the amount of waste uh, being produced and it is it's a it is not too high from where uh, the in, in the especially in the, in the western sector. From the Indian context this number seems to be high uh, because uh, we our uh, CPHEO manual uh, which uh, you know CPHEQ manual they, they, they suggest a uh, figure of around 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 for the urban area as of now. But the, with the advent of all these online shopping, packaged material, lot of packaging people uh, you see if you I was just traveling by uh, the plane yesterday uh, few days back uh, yesterday and when uh, during those uh, they bring you those food and after the food is done if you look at the uh, packaging uh, although you had the food, but uh, the most of the waste that is like lot of paper there was uh, it uh, like a it sandwich came wrapped in a plus parafilm. So, there was a plastic that film plastic and then uh, the like a fruity kind of juice. So, you had that uh, container then you have a straw then you had some a spoon and other things packed those are all plastic spoons then you have things packed in a uh, plastic uh, small uh, kind of uh, 
uh, I would say a small bag or a small, not really a bag, but you probably, you get it what I'm talking about. It's kind of a, a the, all, you, have, you will have spoons with uh, the tissue paper uh, all put in a, s a small plastic uh, um, stuff and that uh, that's that's again the waste you have this uh, napkin uh, paper napkin those uh, plastic uh, uh, spoon fork and sometimes knife as well and uh, what else you have uh, the straw you have uh, and so and then the, the box in which it came uh, so usually if you have a smaller flight they or uh, even in uh, they they serve you things in a box uh, so if you look at that uh, although you may have eaten all the food you did not waste any food but the whole packaging itself looks pretty uh, quite significant and all, most of it is a very good calorific value material can go so that's why what i'm trying to say is that with uh, more and more of those kind of waste uh, those are those kind of things are being developed where we are using lots and lots of packaging uh, we, we are uh, although we right now we are at 0.6 or 0.7 uh, kg per person per day as per the cphq manual Un unfortunately we don't really have a very good data in terms of uh, what is the real waste generation date uh, rate in the country or in for in different uh, cities uh, that kind of data we still don't have a reliable data on that but uh, assuming that something around 0.7 um, because CPHQ has done that calculation based on some uh, stuff so they come up with this uh, data and so but this is the this is how you get this uh, unit generation rate and the other things that have been shown here is basically the density values so for this particular waste it's it came with a 20 meter cube truck 11 trucks so this is the volume so this is the mass upon volume so you see 184 kg per meter cube and this is uh, individual loads this is mass divided by the volume 40 private loads each 300 centimeter cube so that is 0.3 meter cube and then you get 775 kg per meter cube so what it is trying to illustrate here is if uh, the individual loads are not compacted the truck loads are compacted so you see that uh, with the compaction you actually go almost uh, uh, nearly 2.5 times more weight can be put into those truck because uh, some sort of compaction is happening so this can this is the one example of how this information that we have been talking about it getting applied so we'll look at some of more examples like this uh, in uh, in next video and uh, we'll carry forward this discussion and so this is uh, I hope you are enjoying uh, uh, the course and you can you are seeing the benefit uh, practical application that's uh, like the one of the major goal of this course uh, because there are solid waste courses are offered solid waste books are some books are available not a lot, lot but how the practical practicality aspect like how you will really take this information and apply in the field that's what uh, the uh, we, I'm trying to highlight in this particular course and I hope you're getting that if you're not you are always welcome to put your comments, thoughts, questions, whatever uh, on discussion board. We'll be more than happy to answer anything you have. We are keeping a close eye on that. Again, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.